we can get burned at the stake if we talk about physics and we don't talk about Newton, we don't talk about Einstein. That's, yep. Yo, 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 Mahabayo, what's up, Ketchup? And welcome to and I thank you our time and space to learn life lessons from lessons about life. If the last time we said that everything is moving, the next question is, do things just move however they want to? Like, no rules whatsoever. Just go at it, do whatever the f*** you want. I'm gonna just move and it doesn't matter. Not quite. Because everything almost always follows a set of rules that have actually been around since the beginning of the universe. And they have been described mathematically using what we call scientific laws. Briefly, scientific laws describe what's going on in a given system. And if the maths are done correctly, they can actually be used to predict what will happen in similar systems in the near future. The movement that happens on our scale is best described by none other than Newton's three laws of motion. You guys seriously didn't think we were going to go through physics without ever stopping at Sir Isaac Newton's, you know, like, knowledge mansion, whatever. The first is what we call the law of inertia. It says that an object will tend to maintain its state of motion unless it is acted upon by an external force. So that means if you have an object that is at rest, it'll stay that way. And if you have an object that is in motion, it'll stay that way unless there is a force that actually is strong enough to either make it start moving or make it stop moving respectively. That means no matter how much you try to beg, plea, or invoke all of the gods of all religions, you really have to apply a force in order to change an object's state of motion. There's no getting around that. Newton's second law describes the relationship between force, mass, and acceleration by the equation F equals M times A. Let's first identify what these letters stand for. F equals the force that you apply on the object, M equals the mass of the object in question, and A equals the acceleration of the object. And the main thing that we want to define here is mass. Okay, we've been talking a lot about mass ever since we talked about matter. Mass is actually a property of matter. What is mass? Mass is just how much inertia an object has. And from this first law of motion, inertia means the resistance to change a state of motion. So that means how much an object resists moving or stopping. This implies that objects that have more mass have more inertia, which means it's harder to make them start or stop moving. Does that make sense? Now back to the relationship between force, mass, and acceleration. From this equation, we can see force is directly proportional to acceleration, which means that if you apply more force on the same object, you are going to expect it to accelerate at a proportional amount. And if you apply the same amount of force on a more massive object, say you change the mass of the object, but you don't change the amount of force that you apply, then you're going to expect the acceleration of that object to be slower to compensate for the fact that the force still has to be constant. And of course, the third law of motion states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. What does that mean? Say we have this little hippopotamus sitting on a chair. Why is it not going through the chair? Isn't there supposed to be gravity that's somehow supposed to attract it closer and closer to the core of the earth? Not happening. Because as the hippo is exerting its weight on the chair, the electrons of the chair are actually exerting an equal and opposite force back up its ass. Electrostatic force. Repulsion between the electrons. By far, the way that we experience a lot of these forces on our scale is through actual physical contact, which involves mostly pushing or pulling on each other. Whether something's pulling us, or we're pulling something, or something's pushing us, or we're pushing something. So how do we explain gravity? Gravity is described as two objects with mass just slowly approaching each other until they sort of, whoop, they're right next to each other. But what exactly is pulling them towards each other? Newton even described gravity as this mysterious force of a distance. He wasn't satisfied with this at all. So that's when Einstein comes in. <laughs> because yeah, Einstein. So Einstein revolutionized the way 
that we understood what gravity is. And it's not a force. It's actually a warp in space-time. What? Ang warp in space-time na naman yung pinagsasasabi mo? Like, we live in a three-dimensional space. So all objects in mass will tend to sort of warp or distort that space. Pagka umupo ka dun sa kama mo, o humiga ka sa kama mo, di ba nagkakaroon ng parang lubog? You're the planet, and the, the space, space-time, is your mattress. If you have any object, any smaller object that you put next to you, it's going to tend to roll towards you. And so that's why we're glued to the Earth. Because if you think about the Earth being on the mattress, and we were just this teeny tiny thing on a mattress, then we're like, woo! We're like, <laughs> we're never gonna get out of the warp that it made. So we would like roll to that warp, to that depression that was made by the earth so we're kind of stuck to the earth that's what gravity is i hope the mattress analogy works a lot of what you see in, in science videos actually would be people putting bowling balls on trampolines and then they're going to roll some smaller balls in a straight direction but you're going to find that they're not going to go in a straight path instead they're going to start curving and sort of going around in circles around the larger ball at the center. Of course, it's not really like the best visualization of gravity because again, space-time is in four dimensions and the trampoline thing is just in a flat dimension. Think of the warp existing like in all, you know, just, just all dimensions. To summarize, first law, it takes work to get something done. You want to change an object's state of motion, you're gonna have to apply a force. There is no getting around. Second law, it takes more work to get a bigger thing done. The less work you put into that same big thing, then it's just gonna take you a lot slower to get that thing done. Third law, if you think something's holding you down, then how do you feel knowing that something's pushing you up too? <gasps> and of course, finally, we cannot escape gravity <laughs> unless you have a rocket sent into space but even when you're out in space you are still influenced by the warps made by other planets and other massive bodies in space so yeah you really can't escape gravity there's just there's no getting around that wherever on the earth you may be or actually wherever on the universe you may be these laws are always obeyed and because of that i can say that even without trying i am a very law-abiding citizen of the universe yep there's just no way I can disobey these laws. But how do we explain black holes or things at a very quantum scale? Sometimes the laws of universal gravitation don't really even work. <gasps> Does that mean the law is broken? Mm, not quite. See, the universal laws have always been there, whether or not humans were here. When humans came into the picture, we just wanted to translate it into our language. It's most likely that the gaps are in the translation and not the law itself. And that's why for some reason, it seems like the laws are violated. Oh, ano naman kayo mga kabayo? What life lessons have you learned from today's lesson about life? Let the whole world know in the comments section below! Next time we will look at a different set of laws that will prove to you that you're roughly about 13.8 billion years old. <gasps> and as always, if you want to learn more about physics, laws of motion, scientific laws, a lot of other laws, there's just so much can head over these channels, go ahead, check them out, and don't stop asking those questions. Kita kits mga bagits! And I, thank you. And so that is why I am... What the hell?